Hi, today's video is about a question in our forum again and the question is asked by a person called Nitikesh who is an engineer and the question is what is earthquake force? I am doing my civil engineering and I have this doubt what is earthquake force exactly. I know that it is a lateral force but not able to really understand how it is acting on buildings. When it's a wave acting on ground, why should we divide into many zones? It will be helpful if you clarify this. So this question is what we are going to discuss. Hi all, this is Premjit here from civilera.com. Before we proceed, I request you to subscribe to my channel and also click on this bell icon and then follow me for future updates. Let me come back to the question posted by Nithikesh in the forum. I also encourage you to come to www.civilera.com slash forum and then see other questions as well what is posted here and also use this forum for your benefit of asking your questions. Now answering him I will take this into two parts. What is earthquake force? So many things that in his question also he is posting like I know that it is a lateral force but not really able to understand when it is a wave acting on ground why should we divide into many zones okay so many things that earthquake is a wave and it's coming and hitting your building and then because of that your building is getting a pressure just like a wind load so I want to say that that's a wrong understanding and that's a myth the fact is that though earthquake is a wave the force is not something that is a result of the heat from that wave. Let me show you an example that will clarify the understanding. So let us consider a moving or a stationary bus and let us assume that people are standing in the bus and you assume that you have different people, some are holding on the bar, some are not holding on the bar, some are freestanding and so on. Now consider the bus moving. All of a sudden when the bus moves, what happens? You will feel inertia. Now what is inertia? If you are a mass, you are being pulled down to the center of the earth by gravitational force and at the same time when you are moved by the bus because of its lateral movement, what happens? You will have a resistance to your movement because you are being pulled down by the gravitational force. So this tendency to remain stationary because of that gravitational pull will create inertia in you. Inertia, the word itself tells you what it means. It's an inertia. It's a reluctance. It's a reluctance to move. When the bus moves, you are reluctant to move because of the inertia and that is what is creating force in you. So if you look at the equations in your textbook or in your IS 1893 code, you know that VB, the base shear, equal to acceleration multiplied by the weight. Now what is this weight? This weight is your lateral weight and how this lateral weight is coming? This lateral weight is coming from your inertial force. So you are on weight if you are 100 kg that 100 kg is acting as the lateral load as per this equation. So you are on weight, you are on gravitational weight, your own vertical weight is being transferred or being chained or being added as a lateral load because of inertia. So earthquake is nothing but an inertial force, your own weight getting added up as a lateral load because of the inertia. Same thing happens to your building as well when you have a building and when there is a ground movement all your column beam junctions are going to get stressed because of the uh, lateral load which is resulting due to the inertia. So the inertia will create lateral forces at the column beam junctions and your building is going to get deflected. So earthquake is a deflection type of load because of the inertia and not a wave coming and hitting your building as is envisaged by many students. There are a lot of things more to be spoken about it but then my intention is only to answer the question that is posted here. Now the second part of it is when it is a wave acting on ground, why should we divide it into many zones? Say for example, India is divided into five seismic zones. Zone 1, you like it or not, it's a blank zone. There is no 
plays in that zone zone 2 you have many places in zone 2 then you have zone 3 4 and 5 in India there are four seismic zones zone 1 is blank there is no place in that particular zone and you have 2 3 4 and 5 now why do you divide zone in India into different zones again coming back to the equation the base shear equal to acceleration multiplied by W now we know what is W but then you don't know the acceleration what can be the acceleration in the case of an earthquake we don't have an exact value available because how do we know that earthquake is a natural force and we don't have an idea on what that value will be and again we are not doing an earthquake proof design we are doing an earthquake resistant design where we are only taking a part of the load coming now we don't know what is that actual earthquake acceleration to decide the portion of that now code tells you that since we cannot design for the full acceleration or we don't know the entire accurate exact acceleration we will have to go by a rule of thumb or we will have to consider it based on certain conditions and that is what code does so the code tells you a formula which relates to importance factor to SA by G and response reduction factor and also to your zone factor so code is relating your acceleration to various things including your importance of the building to your time period to your response reduction factor for more understanding you can read 1893 and understand it if you are not familiar with this I am only limiting to zone factor here as per the question now why zone factor because the probability of earthquake in different places do differ and based on the place and based on the possibility of acceleration and based on the possibility of earthquake the intensity of earthquake can differ something in Bangalore may be different from what can be experienced in Delhi and that's the reason Delhi is in zone 4 and Bangalore is in zone 2 now this study is done based on two aspects one is the history of earthquake in these places and second is the chances or probability of earthquake in these places depending upon the study of the earth's crust and the seismology of that region so based on that the entire country is studied and then we know that the chances of earthquake based on history and based on the studies of the earth's crust it's known that certain places are more susceptible to earthquake and certain places are expecting lesser earthquake now can that be true all the time we cannot say that because earthquake is a natural phenomenon and it's not in our control but we are doing is what best possible that we can do with limited information that we have so that's all from me today two things in the question one was what is earthquake force and second why do we need to zone i hope this has been useful and please like and share the video and also visit www.civilera.forum for reading the answer that I'm going to post there and to see the various other questions that students have posted. You can also use this space in forum for your discussions. I would suggest you also contact me on my email or WhatsApp in case if you want to get into my community and groups so thank you for watching have a great time and a great learning